Hey FHN, and welcome back to The Nightly Show. I hope life is treating you well and you're ready for another week. I'm John. I'm Emily. And let's see what this show has in store for you. This week we got Parker's FHN Face-Off, a science experiment by Ben and Will, Marina's Man on the Street, and Daniel's review of a Brock Hampton album. But here's Jenna first with the weather. Hello everyone, I'm Jenna, this is the weekly weather. This week, our temperatures in the mornings will be ranging from 54 to 66 degrees. In the evenings, we are once again dropping down into the upper 30s and low 40s. We are looking at partly cloudy skies Monday through Thursday with a 44% chance of rain on Friday. This week, our pollen count is once again moderately high with tree pollen and grass pollen causing the most discomfort for everyone who has allergies. To avoid your allergies, refrain from sniffing pretty flowers that you might see in flower beds or out on the street. I hope you all enjoy your week, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks, Jenna. Looks like we'll be expecting some typical spring weather. Hopefully the weather stays good enough for you to enjoy the full pink supermoon happening on April 26th. The moon is supposed to be a lot brighter and bigger than usual. Make sure you check it out if you get the chance. Yeah, and moving away from our natural events and into sports, we've got Parker talking about boys volleyball in this week's FHN Face-Off. What's up everyone, I'm Parker Smith, bringing you another episode of FHN Face Off. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. We are going to be covering the boys volleyball varsity team. I'll be covering their record and standings in the Gateway Athletic League, highlight players to keep an eye out for, and future matchups. But let's start off with our stat breakdown of our volleyball team. Okay guys, so currently our varsity team is 10-1 with our only loss being against Pattonville in a four-set game. We are currently first in our league, who would have thought, with Francis Howell in second with a 5-1 record. Let's take a look at our highlight players helping us out with our amazing season. So far in the season, Avery Ward has been an absolute beast on the court. Throughout his career at North, he has put up 80 kills in 27 games, which gives him an average of almost three kills a game. Rogan Krauss and Samuel Portner have also helped us out by putting up 118 kills combined and Portner with 16 aces. Now for our future matchups. Over the weekend we competed in a tournament, but due to this being recorded last Thursday of last week, I don't know the outcome. But feel free to ask our team how they did. We also have games Wednesday and Friday against Francis Howell Central and Ford Zumwalt North. Alright guys, that's all for me today. See y'all next week. Great work, Parker. And for more volleyball, there's another game at 4.30 on Thursday, the 22nd. And on top of that, there's a lacrosse game today at 5.30. And you can check out both of the live streams at fhntoday.com slash live. And if you're looking for something other than sports games to watch, here's a science experiment with Ben and Will. Hey, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Ben. And today we're going to be showing you guys a cool science experiment. What you're gonna need is some warm water, some Skittles, and a nice little plate. First, what you're want, gonna wanna do is arrange your Skittles in rainbow order around the edge of your plate, like so. Then as you do that, you're gonna wanna dump in the warm water slowly, but add a decent amount. Then let your Skittles sit in the water for about a minute and you're done. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. That experiment was really cool. I'm gonna have to try that out for myself sometime. Thanks, Ben and Will. Next week on April 27th, 28th, and 30th, Color Guard auditions are happening in the small gym, 5.30 to 9.30. You must be there all three dates, but make sure to come out if you want to try something different. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Up next, Marina Williams brings us some of these seriously difficult questions to answer in this next segment. Hey guys, it's Marina, and today I'm going around the halls at FHN for some controversial food opinions. What is your name? Devin Alexander. How do you feel about pineapple on pizza? Pineapple on pizza is disgusting. It's too sweet. <laughs> and do you eat macaroni with a fork or a spoon? I eat macaroni with a fork. Cool. What is your name? My name is Riley McBride. How do you feel about pineapple on pizza? Um, I've tried it once and it was okay, so... <laughs> eh. And do you consider cereal to be soup? No. Cool. What is your name? Julian. How do you feel about pineapple on pizza? I think, I think it's pretty all right. I've personally never had it, but I think anyone who likes it should be able to like it. And do you consider cereal to be soup? No. Okay. 
My name is Mr. Edwards. How do you feel about pineapple on pizza? I'd rather not have it. Okay, and do you think vegans should be able to eat animal crackers? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. What is your name? Brenna. How do you feel about pineapple on pizza? I think it should not be. Okay. And do you consider hot dogs to be tacos or sandwiches? Both. Thanks, Marina. I'm glad someone is taking a look at the things that really matter. And you know what else matters? The AP exams are coming up on May 3rd, so make sure you've been preparing and studying for those as they come up soon. Looking for some new music to listen to while you pretend to study for your exams? Well, Daniel's got just the thing for you with the review of the Brockhampton album. Rapid Record Review. I'm Daniel Bridgman, and today we'll be talking about Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine by Brock Hampton. This album uh, just came out uh, at the time of recording this today, and it's pretty good. Uh, it's The first half is pretty feature-heavy, featuring Danny Brown, JPEG Mafia, uh, ASAP Rocky, and ASAP Ferg. Uh, there's a few others, I'm, but those are the real standout ones. And they all deliver some pretty good performances on this album. Uh, I'd say Danny Brown's is probably the best, and uh, his verse was on Buzz Cut, which is the first single for the album. And I'm kind of sad to say that the album doesn't really reach that level again. I feel like Buzz Cut's really the main standout track here. And so it's a little disappointing that it doesn't reach there again, but most of the album's still pretty good. Um, Guitar-centric tracks like The Lights Part 1 and Part 2 are amazing. Uh, What's the Occasion also is a, an amazing track. Very guitar-heavy with the beat. And then there's Don't Shoot Up the Party, which has pretty good chorus and some good lyrics. And that's about all I can say about the good stuff about the album. Um, the song Windows, while I liked it at first, there is a... It's not the best. It uh, has, it's too long. I think the main issue with Windows is it's too long and they really could have cut it down a little bit. Uh, Joba has this bar about COVID-19 that I personally just don't like. I don't like bars about COVID. They kind of usually suck pretty bad. Uh, and then some of the choruses on this album, not a fan. I feel like Brockhampton really isn't on the top of their game anymore. I feel like after Saturation 3, they kind of didn't do the best. Ginger was pretty good, but in my opinion, this isn't as good as Ginger. This album is probably, I'm feeling a 7 out of 10. It was going to be an 8, but the track Dear Lord, which is one of the last few tracks on the album, is horrible. It's like what Kanye was doing on Jesus is King, but worse. So yeah, that brought it down from an 8 to a 7. And I'd say the standout tracks here are Buzz Cut, The Light, and Chain On. And if there's any skips, it would have to be Dear Ward. Yeah. Brockhampton, Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine, 7 out of 10. Thanks, Daniel. I might have to check that new album out. And of course, if you want to look great while doing whatever it is you do, maybe you can get some ideas from Sarah Asbury in our Drip, Drip of, of the Week. week. Hey, I'm Sarah, I am a freshman here, and so I'm just wearing a turtleneck under this crew neck, and this crew neck I thrifted. Um, the turtleneck was probably like $5 from Walmart. These pants I got from an online store called Dainty Basics, and they were like $30, I think. And then I have my Reeboks, which were like $90, maybe. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Love your outfit, Sarah. Thanks for letting us feature you. Next up is Justin Keringle showing us his cute little bird on Pet of the Week. Hi, my name is Justin Keringle. I'm a senior here at North, and here's... Uh, my pet bird, Becca. Uh, my family has guinea pig and fish, but this is our oldest animal, our oldest pet. Uh, we got her April of 2013, when she was only six months old. And uh, just a few facts about her, she lays eggs twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. They're unfertilized, luckily, so we don't have a bunch of baby birds running around. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 
she eats seeds and millet, but her favorite uh, favorite snacks are honey nut Cheerios, Ooh. honey nut Cheerios, and uh, we sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to her every single night. So yeah, just that's her and me. Justin, you got a cute bird. And that brings us to the end of this week's show. If you enjoyed, remember to like and share the video. To keep up with more news and updates, follow our social media at FHN Today. Until next time, stay safe, FHN, and have a great week.